I've just entitled this a reflection Jesus. It's the only name I could come up with for this reflection. You know, what really grabbed me today, I got excited as I considered um, really the complexities of Scripture and the Old Testament and the names of God. And, you know, there's many different uh, groups of Christians and there's many spin-offs and and cults and deceptions of Christianity because of the identity of God. And it really does come down to that. You know, in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, Paul says that the devil will masquerade as an angel of light. The, the devil deceives by dressing up as God, as an angel of light, and then steering our attention to something that is not the Spirit of God. He will look like God, but then move off into what is not God. Um, the, the identity of God, the identity of Jesus, is so critical because it's in God that we find life. It says in John 17, 3, knowing the Father and knowing Christ is eternal life. So if the enemy can obscure the person of God, then we miss the door to life. Jesus said in John 10, 9, he said, I am the door. He who enters through me will be saved. It is in God that we have life. That is why in Acts 9, when Paul, he says in, in Philippians 3, 5, he said he was a Pharisee, a, a Hebrew of Hebrews, with regards to the written law, he was a Pharisee. Paul was so dedicated to the text, the letter of the law. He was so committed uh, to, to, the, to the Greek, to the Hebrew, to the theology. He says, with regards to the written law, I was a Pharisee. With regards to the physical acts of, of doing and of being, he said, I was circumcised on the eighth day. So, it was written on Paul's body. It was written on his mind and in his morals. He said, with regards to the law, actually the following verse, Philippians 3, 6, he said, with regards to the law, I was faultless. It's a big thing to say. So Paul, he had a history in the word of God, in the written word, in theology, everything. But it came down to this, because in Deuteronomy 6, God says, The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul. Isaiah 45, 5, I am the Lord. Apart from me, there is no other. There is one true God. And Paul knew it, and he knew the text. And that's why he thought that Christ and the way it's referred to in, in Acts 9... He thought it was some kind of blasphemy or heresy because it was taking its eyes off the one true God of the Old Testament and focusing on Christ. And he was right. They were focusing on Christ because Jesus said he was one with the Father. And fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 14, 9, there will be one Lord and one name. Acts 4, 12, Peter said, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. All eyes on Christ. And Paul said, no, this can't be because there's one Lord. So in Acts 9, when, when the Lord shines a light around Paul, who was Saul, he shines a light around Saul and he says, why are you persecuting me? Saul asks the key question that was going to plummet him into physical darkness and spiritual turmoil for three days. He said, and it all hangs on this, he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? And it says, the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus Christ. So Paul, this Pharisee, this Hebrew of Hebrews, the rest of his ministry is a ministry of spirit. In, in 2 Corinthians 3, Paul says we're no longer ministers of a written covenant. We're ministers of a spirit. In 1 Corinthians 2, 2, Paul said, I didn't come to you with, with words of wisdom. I came saying that I knew nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. So that your faith would not rest on persuasive words, but on spirit. 
Paul now has seen the Lord in the face of Christ. Here, listen to this. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, Paul says, God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, this God made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, where? In the face of Christ. In the face of Christ. So Paul is no longer in all Paul's writings, we're not seeing him get all caught up in the letter of the law. We're not seeing him get all caught up in the Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic and trying to show us this and that division or this and that. No, Paul, the God who said, let light shine, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the knowledge of God where? In the face of Jesus Christ. And so from then on, Paul says, I have a ministry of spirit to you. I consider everything else rubbish, he says in 1 Corinthians, uh, or sorry, in Philippians 3. He said, I consider it all loss, verse 8, compared to the surpassing knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Now that he has come to see God in the face of Christ and felt the Spirit of God come over him, and he has now come to know the mystery of God, Colossians 1, 27. The mystery of God is this, Christ in you. Now Paul, is, is his whole life is now spent on bringing the message of Jesus and the Spirit of God and Christ to people so that people can be saved. He's no longer caught up in the letter of the law. It says in John 1.14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Paul is now caught up in God amongst men, here to be touched and seen and known through the spirit of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. God bless you.